What we do here is go back, 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 back. My favorite, favorite, favorite client is the client that knows the industry, knows who all the people are, and has an understanding of where they are in the industry. If you've got something, let it rip. I'm never going to do this again. Everybody grapples with this idea that you're really a fraud. Like, I'm alive. And that's when it clicked with me. I thought, these are not superheroes. These are just men that can do super things. This is Matt Del Negro, and you are listening to the new Stripped Down 10,000 Nose. Today's episode is ripped from one of our 10,000 Nose Insiders Community VIP Zooms. This one was with talent agent Marion Campbell from Buckwall Talent in Los Angeles. She is my agent. She's been my agent for, I think, over a decade now, which is crazy to think. And today is actually part two for Marion. She came and spoke to us back in 2021, and we put that out. If you want to go back, we put the link in the show notes if you want to go listen to it. That was what our agents looking for in an actor. This one today, I had a hard time coming up with a title. Do I need an agent right now? That felt kind of boring. Miles on the road, because we talk about my concept of just getting experience. We got into that, but ultimately we ended up with a title, help me help you because that's how the agents feel and you'll hear that from marion an agent wants to work with someone who knows themselves knows the business knows their place within the business is assertive but not overbearing if you're an actor i think this is a must listen if you're outside the industry i still think there are takeaways for you that would apply to your industry whatever it is that you do but this one is very actor centric so i hope you enjoy it here it is marion campbell what we do here is go back, 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 back. What are your thoughts on do I need an agent right now? And then kind of a second part to that question. If we have some people who are overseas in the UK or Canada or whatever, mm -hmm. they have representation. Do mm -hmm. you have thoughts on whether they need US representation as well? Or how does that work? Do you work in mm -hmm. conjunction with other agents? So those are yeah. two part questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you don't need an agent right now. I agree with that. Miles on the road is so important. Um, and you can all, yes, you can, you can be working and looking for an agent at the exact same time. It happens a lot. Um, sometimes the best way to get an agent is because you get this great job and you're working with your coworker on set, let's say, and that person tells their agent how amazing you are. And then that agent calls you and that's the most organic way to get an agent, honestly. It's like, we're, we as agents are constantly, constantly looking for clients. So like, like constantly, we, we have, I mean, every agency, we have meetings about who are you watching? Who do you like? Who's new? Who's up and coming? Like, it's a huge component of our job and what we do. So people, agencies are always looking. They may not say that they're looking, but they are. So there's that. I think that miles on the road is such a great way to say it, Matt, because I think that it's just, it's invaluable. You know, experience is experience. And I know that there's the, you know, catch 20 to uh, you need an agent to get a job. You can't get a job without an agent. It's a cycle. That is true. But I also think that in this day and age, um, you know, with kind of like the social media and YouTube and the digital platforms that give you a chance to put cre creative content out into the world, um, anybody can be doing that, right? Like anybody can be making fun short films with their friends and putting them on TikTok or putting them on YouTube or wherever. And I think that you can be doing that because you never know what's going to catch fire and you never know what someone's going to see. Um, and that could be a casting director, you know, like it could be, it, it's not necessarily an agent. It could be a casting director or a producer or a writer that sees this funny TikTok video that you put up. They direct message you and all of a sudden you have an audition or a meeting to go do this, you know, job or something. Um, and so, yeah. And I, and I think that, you know, management is a, is a thing too. I mean, I think representation can also apply to, to managers and plenty of actors have managers well before they have an, an agent. Um, and a manager 
And this kind of answers the question about having um, Canadian or UK or representation that's not, or even local like Atlanta representation or you know regional representation. Um, my advice in situations like that is, if you trust that person, the manager that you have, or your local Atlanta agent, or your UK agent, or your Canadian agent, that person will help you find an agent in the United States and navigate that for you. A good manager will know when it's time to come in and bring an agent into the, onto the team because sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's better to not have an agent. Um, it just you know it kind of depends on where you are in your career and what's going on. Um, and same thing with a Canadian agent or a UK agent or a regional agent, they, any good agent in those areas knows people in the United, in the, in Los Angeles, and they can make referrals. And I think that it's also important when you're adding to your team, whether it's an agent or even a manager or at any point, when you're adding anyone to your team, you need to make sure that the person you're adding gets along with everyone else on your team. So your Canadian agent needs to get along with the, your U.S. agent. And the easiest way to do that is to talk to your Canadian agent about who they know and who they get along with. And then that Canadian agent in a perfect world should be the person reaching out and making the connection and making the referral and putting all the pieces together. If you think about it, that's how we met. So I was yes. with my managers prior to working with Marion. We were with another exactly. agency. Uh, we left that agency and I don't remember exactly how it came about, but I remember going on all of my meetings in LA with Becca and Laura. Yeah. And you guys were one of our meetings and we all came out and we we're like, we love her. So it was, and we had yeah. gone to a bunch of great agencies and we, and we liked a lot of people, but for whatever reason, it was you that we, and, and it was kind of, it was unanimous because it wasn't just me that was working with you. What exactly what you just said. And then when we brought Mark on the team, who's my attorney, mm -hmm. it was the same thing. I found Mark through a friend, mm -hmm. a friend of mine said, I, you know, I think this might be helpful. I was like, why do I need an attorney? I talked to these guys. We all talked about the pros and the cons and, mm -hmm. you know, think about it with the city on a hill contract. He was very instrumental and yes, totally. I'm paying him another percentage, but he also, you know, and we don't have to get into that on this call, but the advantage of that as, as we break it down is like your agents and your managers are constantly going, you know, look at Matt, look at Matt, look at Matt. And then you get yeah. the gig and then all of a sudden you're like, no, Matt doesn't want to do it. Matt doesn't, it doesn't say, it's not as easy to negotiate as when you have an, a, 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 a lawyer who comes in and it's like, you know, your manager and agent are like, look at Matt, look at Matt. <laughs> Matt comes in, I want this job, I want this job. I give the audition, I'll bleed for you, I'll bleed for you. They offer the job and now you're like, no, I don't wanna take it. Your lawyer comes in and he's like, you can have Matt, but you can't have right. him unless you do this, this, and this. And he can be the the total hard ass who comes in and is like, no, yeah. we're not doing that for this money. He's gonna yep. walk away. And then you can raise your your fee. So that helps, but that's at a certain, you know, that that that's at a you don't need to think about that necessarily right now. Maybe some of you do, but it's it's kind of the same, it's the same concept of bringing on, you're putting together a team and you, you know, and you really want to think of it, and I actually talk about this in in the book about what we did together, which was yeah. you, you know, I didn't do this for a long time. Finally, at a certain point, I said to these guys, I'm taking you to lunch. We went to lunch and I realized that like you talk about knowing yourself. I realized I was working a lot, but I wasn't where I wanted to be. And I was working right. a lot. Yeah. But I said to them, guys, this is what's happening. We're doing a lot of stuff and it's great, but I want bigger. I want more. And we made a collective decision that was tough to, to execute which was say no to smaller things. And we said no in the hopes of pursuing something that was a series regular. And it's not that we, they weren't getting me in for series regular roles before that, but I was kind of being used for recurring guest spots. And we had to almost teach the industry how to look at me and then, yeah. and, and it worked in this case, and I'm doing City on a Hill now yeah. about to do season three. So it, it worked, but, I bring it up to say, you guys, the client, you're actually the one leading the team. There, we we tend to think like, yeah. you know, we have to 
you, no offense to you, Mary, but like we have no, to yeah. count out to the agent, we have to count right. out to the manager and all this. It's like, no, they're making money off of us working. So you all want to get together and know what is it that you're doing? Like, what is the Matt Del Negro soap that's being sold? They want right. to sell that soap. We all have to know what it is and what that soap is willing to do and not willing to do. And, and right. then you're on the same page. But you guys kind of goes back to what you said originally, Marion, which is like, you have to know who you are in order to yeah. lead your team well. Yes. And, and there was a question here that somebody emailed me today and it's, and I think it, it leads to that. It said, what makes a great client agent relationship, yeah. even when the actor is not regularly booking? So how would you? Uh, my favorite, favorite, favorite client is the client that knows the industry, knows who all the people are, and has an understanding of where they are in the industry. So like, you know, for example, an actor, like let's say I get the actor, an actor an audition for, you know, I don't know, I'm, like my Law and Order would be a bad example. Like some show, some comedy show on like Comedy Central and the act, like it's a comedy client that would be perfect. That I like when the actor replies back and says, you know what, I love this show. I am perfect for this role. Um, you know, I watched a couple of episodes, you know, I'm going to do it this way, but I, I think maybe if I did a take this way, you know, I'm going to send you two takes because I feel like this is the way the tone of the show would be. But I think that I bring this interesting, you know, take to the character. So because I know the show so well, I'm going to do it this way, that they, but then I want to give them my own take. And do you mind sending them both takes? Then I can like take that. And I can go to the casting director and say, you know, Joe taped for this project. He's a huge fan. He knows the show really well. Here's the one take he did, but then here's his like other take. And if you like what you see and you want to see more, he'd be willing to hop on a Zoom with your career. He, he would be willing to do whatever he needs, but he's like really into the show and knows it really well. So that's important. And I also think that like, so you need to be educated on like what the industry is, right? Like, I think it's important that an actor read the trades, like read deadline and knows what projects are coming out and that you watch TV. I mean, you don't have to watch every episode, but you should watch at least one episode of as many TV shows as you can just to get the tone of the show. And so that when you talk to your agent, you can say, you know what? here are the shows that I really think that I am right for, right? Like my type is blah. So because of that, these are the shows that are just seem like no brainers to me, right? Like these are the things we need to be attacking as a group, as opposed to, I want to be a movie star, you know, find me the lead of a movie. Like it just, it's just not, it's a waste of time. I think I just, I love the client that knows where they are in the business and knows what they need to do and knows exactly what shows they need to be on. Or, you know, at the, you know, movie, like, you know, at the, as you move up your career, okay, like I need to get a movie that is different from this role that I'm doing on this series. And these are the people that I know, and here are the movies. These are the filmmakers that I need to be working with because I, you know, am the right type for the, you know, sensibility of this storyteller. It just, knowledge and understanding the business. I just, I don't like when a client, you know, just doesn't have any sense of that. It's, it's very, it's a very difficult road. And so, you know, that's my favorite. And I also find that, that those relationships, the clients that know the business like that, they go long, like they go the long haul, their careers go, they don't just burn out and quit and end up doing something else and leaving the business. And I can have productive conversations with them, you know, like, and, and, and when I have productive conversations with clients who understand the business, I get to know them better. They get to know me better. And when I know my client better as a human being, I'm a better agent for that actor. And so, you know, like, that's important. I just think that's so important. And I think that a lot of actors don't have those relationships with their agents. They, they, they do with their managers because managers, it's a smaller, you can kind of, but you need to kind of foster that. 
that's interesting because you know you really do believe that because i remember and again this was part of my growth when all of a sudden i started the podcast and i had the book deal came about and i remember being like oh i don't want to really bog these guys down with all this stuff it feels like it's over here in this space and i want them to do what they're doing and i said to them a, a friend of mine who's in the business said you need to get your team to work more for you on all of this and and my thought was like yeah but you know they're busy going getting me roles and i said it to them and they said no we definitely want to be involved and marion said exactly what she just said she said the fact that you have a book she's like that just gives me something else to talk to them about when i'm pitching totally. you to get in the room matt's got this podcast he sat down with henry winkler he sat down with totally. kevin bacon it's just something else to sell it's yeah. again it's like it's like that bar of soap is is she has a lot more angles right because she she has she knows more facets of what i bring to the table right. And, and also just in case any of you are sitting there and getting overwhelmed and going, oh my God, I don't watch enough shows. I don't, I don't know enough people. I don't read the trades. Let me just tell you, when Marion was just talking, I'm thinking to myself, oh crap, I need to watch more. I need to read deadline more. I need to, so I'm doing this a long time. And, and I still think that, you know, like I, I, it's actually great to hear for myself. It's great to hear you say this because I do, I do that. I sometimes do that more intensely than at others. And then there are some times where I'm not doing enough of it. And, yeah. and, you know, which makes me think for all of you guys, all of this stuff, how it's like a 10,000 nose mantra. How do I add value first? So think yeah. about it in this way, add value to your agent by making, making you the product easier for them to sell. Then, right you know and by telling you like you you know yes that's their job but they also have a bunch of other clients and mm -hmm. and nobody cares about you as much as you it's, i'm sorry right. nobody cares about you right. know marion's great she's doing this thing she does she cannot care about my career as much as i do so if right. i don't take the reins and and show her and say no you know you're missing this because you've got other clients then, then that's kind of on me. I've got to, I've got to do that. And, you know, going back to that relationship with the agent, it's like, you know, you're, you're not necessarily, you know, every day hounding them so they can't do anything else, but it right. is being, you know, actually, that's a good question for you. What's your, you know, how, how, when do you start seeing a client as like, oh, they're two hands off. Um, right. and I forget about them versus, oh God, they're a pain in the ass. They're calling me every two seconds and I can't, I can't service my other clients. Is there, a, right. is there like a, like, is there like a fine line for you? You know? Yeah. I mean, it kind of, you, you need to, so here's the thing. You need to have a relationship with your agent and certainly you should take that upon yourself. Right. Cause you can control that. Right. Um, I think checking in with your agent for like no reason is kind of annoying. Like, Hey, just checking in, like what's going on. Like it, it, it's kind of annoying. Like, you know, so try to come up with a reason to check in with your agent, like have, like bring something to the table, um, have information, even if it's, Oh my God, I see that Warner brothers, you know, optioned this book and they're turning it into a movie. I read the book, it's my favorite book. Uh, you know, not I'm gonna play the lead if you're not there in your career yet, but it could be something like, I read this book, it's awesome. There's a ton of really good supporting roles. You know, um, I'm gonna keep tracking it, but if you guys could just flag it, uh, uh, you know, this particular role is really good. Hopefully it stays in the, if there's a script, I'd love to read it. Like that kind of a thing is like super helpful because it's helping us get to know you. Oh, he's a reader. He likes this book. He likes this kind of, um, you know, material. I'm going to flag that. And, you know, I have most agents do, I have like an email file folder for every single one of my clients. So I would flag that email and drag it over. And just, cause every week I kind of go through all my clients folders to just kind of see where things are and, you know, catch up on things it's just helpful because they're going to get to know you as a human as like your likes and dislikes. 
Um, another thing you can do is, which is totally appropriate, is checking in if, if if there was an audition that you loved, like let's say it's a project that you loved and you really thought the tape was killer, you can reach out to your team about feedback. Um, not for everything, but especially if it's something you feel like, God, this is really perfect. You know, can we track this? If, if an actor really feels passionate about a project and they ask me about it, I mean, I'm myself, I try to get that feedback. I don't just have my assistant do that. I try to do that because then I get into a dialogue with the casting director or the producer or whoever it is about the client. And then I learn about you know, how, what they, how they thought, how close they were, if they're still in the mix, if they're not like, so I think, um, you need to be in touch with your agent for sure. Don't just like ignore them. Um, but at the same time, just whenever you reach out, have something specific to reach out about, because that'll start the conversation. Another question, just because there are some people that don't have representation currently. Yeah. Um, yeah. what materials do people need to, so just so that people, you know, while you're in the miles on the road phase, yeah. Yeah. what materials should they have in order when courting an agent? Like, let's say all of a sudden the scenario yeah. you gave before, uh, one of your clients is working with someone, you know, say it's yeah. someone like me working with someone who's yeah. 22. And I'm like, you got to meet this girl. She's unbelievable. And, yeah. and then you take it, you say, yeah, I'll have her in for a meeting. She, she goes there, she shows up and mm -hmm. does it matter at that point, what they have in like, in terms of headshots, in terms of a reel, in terms of mm -hmm. any of that stuff, what's like the perfect world scenario. What's the, okay, I can manage this. And what's the, oh God, red flag They're They're, you know, this is terrible. Right. I think, yeah. I mean, the headshot has to be a really good shot that represents who the person is. So the, and that's an important thing too. Your headshots need to look like you. And, and if that means you've aged out of them and you need to get new headshots, then you need to get new headshots. They need to look like what's coming in the room because the headshot is the first thing that anybody looks at. Even if, you know, Matt, you're referring someone to me, I'm going to look at, I'll meet anyone you want me to meet with. So that's important too. You know, as you make relationships in this business, that's actually a really important thing as you guys make relationships in this business with other actors, directors, whoever it is, and a person believes in you and they vouch for you and they're willing to stick their neck out and like set up a meeting for you. I mean, I will meet anyone that Matt wants me to meet because he's my client and because I love him and I trust him. I'm not going to sign everyone, but anybody that Matt sends my way, I'm 100, I'll meet them sight unseen. So if you get that opportunity, your headshot needs to look like you. You need to just, you need to give a good meeting. You can't be like a dud in the meeting, which is don't push it, but you know, be like lively and engaging and, you know, ask questions and answer questions and make sure the meeting doesn't go too long, but also make sure it doesn't go 15 minutes. Okay. That's it folks. We kind of cut Marion off there. She's about to talk about how to give a good meeting. We're putting that into a part three, part one, what talent agents are looking for. That was from, all from the same conversation. And we've got that link in the show notes. Part three is going to be how to give a good meeting. And also we're going to get into, do you need social media? That's going to be out in the end of January. There are going to be a few episodes before then. I'm guessing if you made it this far, far, you probably are an actor. So I definitely would tune back in for that one at the end of January. Also, if you're an actor, we have landed on a date for our next Let's Shoot the Rehearsal weekend intensive on camera retreat in New York City. It's going to be February 17th and 18th. Email us info at 10,000nos.com and we will get you all the information you need. This is our fourth one, I believe. We also did a one day workshop. They've all had tremendous feedback. So I'm actually going to do an episode in the beginning of January that's going to kind of get into the nitty gritty of what we do in the weekend intensive. So if you're on the fence and you hear that, you may want to join up. Do it quickly because these do tend to fill up. That's it. We'll see you next week. And as always, thank you for listening.